The coast is toast. Welcome to IP Suffer. Oh. This says the coast will be toast. Yes, but either way, I like it. <laughs> Every goddamn thing in this movie is somehow the same but different between like three different fucking things. I don't yeah. know what's happening. Uh, the hell? Wait, what is the movie cost? Uh, the fuck is this? Uh, the internet. The, every I hate this movie. I was way into it until I googled it. Now I just can't figure out what the fuck anything is. I think I've I think I've got to leave. Do the finish the intro. I've got a uh, intro finished. No, <laughs> uh, this is episode two hundred fifty seven of I. P. Everyone's Suffer. so confused right now. I, yeah, I am don't... one of the atomic sharks. I'm There's... the second atomic shark. <laughs> um, I, I'm Bud from yeah, Married you're, with you're, Children. You're, you're Bud Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we are watching Atomic Shark question mark from 2016. Is what definitely watching. from 2016. Yeah, <laughs> that we can at least agree on. But by who? Good question. All right, so okay, I looked up. I looked up Lisa Palencia. Right, she has zero directing credits on IMDb. She is only a producer and costume designer. And she was a producer on Atomic Shark not a director so this has to be some kind of other fuckery just uh, yeah it's it's so weird because then i don't understand like why griff first is listed as one of them but then like the a b or a d whatever is one of them like somebody's somebody's i i'm convinced fucking with just us yeah us specifically no one else is gonna pay attention (laughs) So the the reason that we're confused is that this movie is either called Saltwater Atomic Shark or it's just called Atomic Shark. There's two listings. There's two different kinds of sharks happening. The year's the same. The title question mark maybe is the same. Considering as the movie we watched, Saltwater, they say the word Atomic Shark many times. So we know it's an Atomic Shark at least. But there's two different movies listed. The plot is the same. I will say the one listed under Atomic Shark that we think is fake has a longer plot listed. And then half of the cast is the same, half of the cast is different. So the director is different every single place you look it up. Uh, So good luck trying to decide which movie we watched. We watched the good one that has a kid whose head explodes because the shark gets too close to him. Yes. I I gotta say, like... Typical sci-fi channel shark movie plot. Way yeah. better deaths than almost any of the uh, other shark movies we've covered. Other than maybe uh, that Megalodon movie we did. Did we do... What was that fucking movie called with the the dude in the jet ski? Just gets eaten. Oh, Shark Attack 3. Uh, Is that... Megalodon. Yeah, that's. I, I thought it was a Megalodon thing. And I was like, wait, am I thinking of something else? Uh, the death in this rock very on board with just a shark getting near somebody and they just essentially explode (laughs) the dude eating the fish that's that's when this movie really turned me around and i was like all right (laughs) well it it starts pretty good and then it's like typical sort of sci-fi shark movie where like you get at least 20 minutes of just like people doing just whatever bullshit where you're getting like character like development i guess but then, like, once it gets into, like, the second half, it rocks. I was very on board. I feel like okay. the last, I don't know, couple shark movies we did were probably, like, at, at least memory serves me right, were, like, those, like, slightly boring ones where we were just kind of like, yeah, I guess, I don't know, it's a shark just sort of doing something. And so this was kind of, like, a nice little refresher into how good some of the sci-fi channel shark movies could be for me. So... The other so so I'm still on this. The director is A. B. Stone, 
that's listed on Tubi. If you pull up A.B. Stone on Letterboxd, the only thing it says that they made was Lake Placid versus Anaconda on IMDb. But if you just Google the name, it does come up as Saltwater also. So, And there's no information on this person. So I'm going to say maybe a pseudonym for somebody. Maybe it was a bad idea to let people just uh, put, I, their, put their own like info on these yeah, sites. I don't... <laughs> I agree. I don't know how you can test information, but that other one should just be taken down. Um, I there's, mean, there's numerous things on Letterboxd where it's like the exact same movie, but like listed twice where one will have an actual cast and one won't have any of it, and it's very annoying. Yeah, I mean, this isn't the first time this has happened to us, and I feel like specifically with shark movies it happens a lot. This one is just like much more confusing because there's just so much different information. Yeah, um, it's like it's also one of those like like in in reality does not matter because like no, I mean no, we it, it blatantly seems like it's the same movie. I was just trying to get to the bottom of what the fuck was going on with it on like Letterbox, and it was driving me crazy. I'm gonna this movie was fine. Um, I for me, I'm I, I was actually really refresh to be doing a shark movie again though i will say because it's not emotionally taxing in any way to me as the, as the crow was i was um, extreme, <laughs> i was extremely emotionally attached to that kid trying to get with the the the, 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 life, the, the, the life lifeguard guard. <laughs> um i think of the the griff first i'm just gonna say that it was him um, I'm pretty sure. Like, the one we watched, it actively says on the screen that it was, so... Right, and if you look at the other movies that we've done by him, like, this is pretty, you know... It tracks. It's, it tracks, right? Um, I didn't realize that he was in it at first, which I thought was hilarious. I, I think he has a cameo in all of them. Okay, that I would think. make sense. I, yeah. I'm not 100% positive, but I think... Um, but I think, like, as far as the movie, I mean, there were some scenes that looked pretty wacky, if I'm being honest. But, like, overall, this just was kind of, like, a normal movie as far as, like, production goes, the way it looked or whatever. So, maybe the better movie that we've done by him. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's still, like, it looks like a sci-fi channel shark movie. The fucking shark is obviously CGI the whole time. Uh, yeah yeah like i was not expecting like you most of the ones we do tend to or i guess like at least the sci-fi channel ones will be that shit where like almost all the deaths are just like just like a shark jumping out of the water and the person just straight up disappears and so yeah, it was and pretty I mean, nice to see like literally it feels like almost everybody the shark ate either caught on fire exploded or was bitten in half and then you saw the shark come back for the other half so I was sure. very on board. What uh? What do you think, Kit? Uh, I was pretty bored for the first thirty minutes, and then that guy ate the radioactive fish and became a totally different guy. I just got a trauma and then exploded. <laughs> yeah, it's so. And fun. then after that, it was just like an hour of nonstop awesome. Like my only real gripe with this movie is like like Kit just said like the f the first like third of it or whatever is a lot of like that shit where you're introduced to like 30 different people that it, which none of them matter like yeah it's no. just you're most... not watching these movies for character development right it's like godzilla i did i did appreciate that it opened with a godzilla riff where it's like yes. showing old atomic <laughs> test footage yes. um that's pretty fun i think the only other thing that like i was like come on was any time it did any of that like weird internet bullshit with people yeah like i i did like that like i liked some of the jokes like when uh the one lady he likes the the sort of main uh one of the two like i don't know she keeps blowing out the lighter and it's doing the yeah. musical sting <laughs> the with music. it all the time. I was cackling. And I was like, this rocks. But then it does that thing where, like, the one lifeguard is trying to get the guy to come out of the water. And it keeps, like, making it. Like, he thinks she's, like, flirting with him and showing, like, the emojis and shit. And yeah, I, like, oh. I, yeah. I didn't care for that part. So, I, yeah, I guess I agree with you. It was, like, hit or miss jokes for me. Overall. 
still thoroughly had fun watching this movie. As opposed, I did to... also laugh uh, after the guy exploded at the restaurant that showed the little Yelp review and it dropped a star. It's... I did laugh at that. Just one. one. It's so funny, like when he first pops back up out of the table and it's blatantly just like a bigger <laughs> dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm just like, what the fuck is <laughs> happening here? Do what you gotta do to get that shot, but it's very funny. <laughs> um, uh, Alright, before we get into it, I don't know if Katie wrote it down, but I actually remember this time we got Patreon shout out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got a new patron, Mark. Uh, that was supposed yeah. to be this, like two weeks ago, and I kept forgetting. It's been, it's been a long month. <laughs> That's all I'll say. It's, uh, bad times in the world and my job so anyway thanks for joining mark hope you are enjoying bonus episodes specifically hopefully the danny devito one <laughs> the only good one yeah that the john claude made damn those were good yeah everything else don't bother just join for those two <laughs> <laughs> um all right let's dive into this shit katie Oh, okay. Um, it starts underwater, of course, and immediately we jump into it. Atomic Shark. Hear me out. Is the title? We should do our own shark movie called Out of the Water Shark. <laughs> Isn't that land shark? Yeah, but this one's gonna be in the air, which I guess it's, is just sky different... sharks. But <laughs> but we got a different name, so it's different. But okay, our, our shark, our shark is gonna have a helmet filled with water the whole time. Uh, and a okay. gun. Okay. And, and all a SpongeBob. It's gonna have a fucking trench coat, the okay. helmet, and, uh, a, and a Tommy gun, and you're gonna do right. the voice of it. All right, perfect, perfect. Is he from Boston? <laughs> He's from 1920s um, oh. Boston. Yeah, here it is. You ready? Yeah. Mafia shark. I'm in. <laughs> Let's go. Little paperboy from Brooklyn shark. Little eighteen hundred <laughs> newsy shark. Newsy he comes shark. out of the water and immediately has to get a fucking job and just be like a <laughs> sell newspapers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my family's starving, Mister. All right. Oh my god, I'm I ready. A mafia shark, and it's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. So there's just like uh, sharks swimming around in the water as they do. Cut with like black and white submarine footage. And a voiceover that's kind of old timey talking about atomic bombs. Uh, so this is what Kit was literally just talking about. Um, I gotta say, the shark, very weirdly shaped head. Not to body shape, but it, he looked just kind of like if it was a shark made out of balls. He looks like, like a ball sack shark. <laughs> he looks like if the shark was just sort of made of clay and just swam too hard into a rock, and it just kind of smacked Why? his face in a little Crumpled. bit. Why are his eyes so endearing looking? He doesn't look scary at all. He just looks like, look at the twinkle looks, in them. He looks pained. He's living a life of agony. Yeah, yeah. He's all and wants it all to be ended. He, poisoned and shit. He just wants to play basketball. He doesn't want to be in the mafia anymore. <laughs> he had a dream of being a prof- like play for the NBA. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, want to be on the Bulls. Sharks can't dunk, we all know. <laughs> Great um, whites can't jump. <laughs> that's it. That's our that sci fi idea. Get at us. We I don't even have to did... direct it. Just make them and give us credit and some money. Yeah. I actually did have a question, and I think we've talked about this before. Specifically, we don't know what kind of shark this is, aside from atomic. And, like, we discussed that bull <laughs> sharks can kind of do this, but can other sharks, like, leap out of the water? Yeah, I've, I've great whites. I've seen like do that. Like, yeah, they'll they'll jump out of the water for like seagulls and shit. Okay, I don't, like I don't pretty know. fucking high too. Yeah, I don't know of <laughs> all of them, but I know like at least some can. Mm. Too many. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like that even more. Okay, um, someone is water skiing to Elvis, and we see our first shark fin. It is. Um, glowing red, kind of like the effect on this is so dog shit. Yeah, even worse than you would expect. <laughs> it's <rules>. like <laughs> it. It really does look like uh, the shark has like magma inside it, so it's like red. 
Yeah, it, lo <laughs> it looks like it's just made of lava and rules. But, but it, it also looks like PS1 graphics. I was so, going like, to say. Imagine that. It's yeah. like the fin color changes from shot to shot. Yeah. And it kind it's... of feels like somebody just like made one of those like holographic baseball card images for it. So that when it moves, it kind of just slowly loses its brightness. And it, I'm, it's I'm kind interesting. Of so, um, the person that's water skiing, the, the, I do, I, I will have to say, some of these scenes go on really, really long. Let's just cut to the chase. The girl's pulled into the water, and then there's, like, I wrote black mist, um, because I couldn't remember the word for steam. It's steam. <laughs> um, there's black, it's, like, black steam coming off of the water, and the boat guy, who is an actual character, but I called him boat guy the whole time. Until later, when we find out the twist, and I called him Boat Dad. Is it a twist, or is it just the reveal? It's not a twist. It's just, it's not. I was like, were um, they, like, trying to tease that he wasn't her dad, and I forgot? I think we were supposed to be scandalized. Uh, Kit, have you seen Griff first Universal Soldiers movie? Uh, which one is it? It's just called Universal Soldiers from 2007. Is it the made-for-TV sequel that they ignored to make Universal Soldier 2 with Goldberg? Yeah, I mean, probably. I was going to say, there's no way you have they split. They split timelines. I don't think I've seen the made-for-TV one. There's nobody I've ever heard of in this movie. And it's from Asylum, so we have to watch it for the podcast. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. Look, right now, I only have six movies Griff vs. directed that I have not seen. So I gotta, I gotta find a reason to do them. This podcast is the only way I'm gonna do them. So, except for like Plastic Three, I'm not watching that. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. Boat guy Het sees he owns the boat. He was pulling the girl as she was water skiing, and he turns around and sees that her vest is like smoking and charred and on fire. And then he sees her and goes to pull out her charred body. But it's only the top half of her body. And he goes, ew. And he drops her back in the water. <laughs> yeah, same. That's what I would do. Um, then there is uh, scenes of people doing beach stuff. Um, <laughs> then we're introduced to our main character. Who I will say I was mad. This this movie did not have subtitles on Tubi. So oh. for a long time, I was calling the main ca character Kevin. His name is Kaplan. So whatever. Can, can we talk about how... For like 20 minutes i was like damn bud bundy look fucking good now and then i was like and then i finally realized that was not actually uh whatever his name is because he looks it's not no bud bundy's the guy the drone guy later in the movie they go oh yeah, yeah 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 okay for, so, i thought okay so like i like for like the beginning of the movie he kind of like looks a little bit like bud bundy like at like or, you know, David Faustino as, a, like, an adult in this. If, like, I don't know, I guess David Faustino had, like, spent a bunch of time working out. Not that he's in, like, bad shape, but this guy's blatantly in, like, lifeguard shape. Yeah. And so, like, I don't know, there's, like, a, about 20 minutes, I was like, is that David Faustino? Is that, like, is that what he looks like now? And then he finally showed up, and I was like, oh, no, he still looks Oop, exactly yeah, no. the same. I actually didn't know he was supposed to be in this, um, but I recognized him right away, and I was like, oh, weird, okay, All of these fun. movies have to have, like, one pseudo, like, Previously celebrity famous person. Yeah. in their movie. I um, do like that this was produced by Crumudgeon Films. <laughs> what a great name. <laughs> I approve. So, we're introduced to our main character, Kevin slash Kaplan, who has, a, a, yeah. <laughs> who has a phone case that says swimmers rule fail yes he's a lifeguard and he <laughs> is watching a dude bro streaming and i wasn't really sure what was going on but these people come up later so it is like a like a internet show called environmental crisis or something and they're basically just going around and being like you're hiding something about what's going on here. Environmental freedom, this, that, and the other thing. Um, he's also got a drone uh, that he's flying over the water to watch for for sharks because um, 
he has his knee and like a knee brace and they call it a cast but it's definitely not and it doesn't really <laughs> seem to like impede him throughout the movie especially at the end so i'm like confused about why this was like a plot point in the beginning but anyways um so he can't like supposedly run around the beach and like swim to save people so he's just like droning to watch for sharks and then whatever and the lifeguard place um another lifeguard named gina calls him because she's seen a burnt fish that has washed up on the beach and she's like this is like kind of weird right and he's just like "Mm." um (laughs) then she's like guy go someone's drowning anyone asks me question to work yeah, like he, he's just like not he's like someone's messing with you it's like not a big deal or whatever and then she's like gotta go someone's drowning and um <laughs> oh this made me i wrote dead he uh so she runs into the water to save somebody and he drones a life vest out there <laughs> and it's just like a lady who has a cramp and i wrote fuck what does that say oh she like very exasperatedly is like i got another cramp oh she says it like three times it was so funny this whole scene was like ridiculous right like that her acting of i have a cramp in the water is to just like roll around in the water like she's rolling down a hill yeah i got a cramp like and yes i'm pretty sure i've had a cramp in why i got swimming pool before and that is not what happened you didn't have one in the ocean. How would you know? Fair. Don't shame her for her career. <laughs> Anyways, they save her life. And I called him Boss. Um, I think his name is Skip, and this is the director. But we're just going to keep calling him Boss. He's, like, really mad at Kaplan for saving that, using the drone to save that lady. And he says, what do you call a lifeguard who can't swim? unemployed good one got him um okay boat guy tells a cop about the how the atomic shark showed up and um he's basically just like he uh ate my customer and the cop is like oh do you have her body here and he's like no i left her floating around in the water go check (laughs) and the cop is just like okay old man and just like walks away uh, Kaplan and Gina come up and talk to him, but he's, like, really fucking rude to them, and that's why at, when it's, like, revealed that this is actually Gina's dad, I was like, what? Why is he being such a dickhead to them? For no reason. And it's not explained either. I mean, I guess it doesn't have to be, but... Um, this is the first time we hear about the restaurant Tales from the Dockside Grill, which <laughs> I would Amazing. 100% be there. Quality um, joke. Very good. Mm. Okay, this is only important because of later. Basically, um, they see another drone, and the boss is like, hey, I told you to stop using that drone. And he's like, it, it's not me. And then he's like, oh, my God. Because there's this drone that's, like, following women around on the beach, which is, like, fucking gross, right? But he's very dramatically, like, like sprinting down the beach to try and catch the drone or like grab it out of the air but he just falls in the water instead and it was very ridiculous <laughs> um uh Kaplan sees a shark and everyone's like every single time that they think they see a shark everyone's just like shark shark and people start screaming and shit and they run out of the water but then uh it turns out to just be a dolphin and he's like oops sorry false alarm it's a dolphin and everyone was like mm, I'm good <laughs> yeah like honestly same though um then there's two guys doing some water tricks in the marina and i don't really know what this thing is called um but it's like you stand on it and then it shoots out water so you like hover over the water it's a water jet pack it's not on his back though it's a water foot pack okay there you go anyways <laughs> there's a guy jet it means back as if people didn't know. Jetpack is, like, specifically the thing you put on your back, though. I don't think I realized this one was, like, feet. I know they make those ones yeah. where, like, the water shoots out from, like, essentially, like, a, like a jetpack on your back. Yeah, this one, to me, was scarier because, yeah, he's just, like, standing and balancing on it. And I was like, I don't even understand the physics behind this, but I would absolutely not be doing it. But it's, like, 
it's like he's on it and then there's like a tube funneling to it so he's doing like loop de loops and shit and uh basically he oh okay first of all they're out there somebody that people are like watching their stream of them just doing water tricks and we see the atomic chart come up and basically it starts messing with the equipment like you know like pixeling it out and stuff and um then the guy on the foot pack does a loop de loop <laughs> so that like the hose that's attached to it makes like a ring in the air and the atomic shark jumps through the loop which catches on fire and then he bites off the guy's head incredible amazing all in one foul swoop all in one jump <laughs> and then he comes back and eats the rest of the guy's body yeah the shark is um, very like smart with his food choices and knows you know eat all that you could uh, eat all that you take <laughs> okay. Waster shall come to want. Yeah. As my family says. Um there was another person in the marina, but I don't think they show them getting eaten. Uh so but that's fine. This was the star of the show here. This to me I think is like the cool by far the coolest death in the whole movie. Um So Kaplan brings the environmental justice people to interview Gina and she's like not really into it. She is going to school to be, like, an environmental scientist or something. I don't know. And so they bring them in. I don't understand the relationship between um, Gina and her name is Felice. Because the first thing that happens is that she comes and, like, fixes her hair and is like, sit here, we're going to interview her. And she kisses her on the mouth. But then every single other scene that they're in together, they're just arguing and fighting for no reason and it was very confusing to me uh Fel felice also in a universal soldier movie <laughs> great she was <laughs> she was a day of reckoning she um okay so they four stars so mm, are you sure about that <laughs> <laughs> you sure that's why <laughs> um okay so they start interviewing her about the shark and she says that she she basically tells them about all of the burnt sharks that they saw and about how there's been like radiation readings and then they talk about um she's saying that maybe the cause was chemical dumping and uh she basically just like is talking about the effects of radiation, et cetera, et cetera. And then she says, if it is radioactive, it would be the shark. It would be impossible to kill. So that's not great. Um, this is one, <laughs> yes. this is like kill like a again. Bad scenario to be in. Yeah. Uh, there's a girl snorkeling. Um, this is like an underwater kill. We don't see this kill. She just like disappears. And then there's steam coming off the ground. Um, I mean, steam coming off the water. Um, I mean, what is what is water but the ground of the sea? Water's just I mean, liquid ground. Yeah, but there's but there's a ground in in the sea, the ocean floor. Yeah, well, that's the ground. the ground of the ground of the sea. Oh, okay. I've never seen that. I refuse to believe it's there. I mean, I'm that's never fair. going that deep. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's like this little kid who's in the movie throughout. He's in love with uh, one of the lifeguards whose name is Kylie and um there's a lot of weird social media stuff going around going on with Kylie or whatever there's this little girl that comes up to her and she said did you know that I heard that more people die from selfies than shark attacks <laughs> I, I believe it that's during the planking craze that's why yeah I believe it God. um forgot about planking <laughs> um okay now the kid is floating in the water and is like help i'm drowning they think he's drowning the boat guy pulls him up and is about to like give him mouth to mouth but the kid's like no no shh, wait don't and then like pretends to be passed out because he waits for kylie to come and give him mouth to mouth and then this seems like such a fucking waste of time yeah because then he's like 
he wakes up and he's like, oh, thanks for saving me. Oh, uh, I need more oxygen. She's like, okay, we're digging you to the hospital. And then he had to go to the hospital, even though he was like totally fine. That so seems boring. The parents that had to pay for that hospital bill. Yeah. So Kylie the kid just lost and... all of his college fund. Seriously. Kylie and the boss take the kid to the hospital. And while they're gone, he's like, Kathleen, I'm going to leave you in charge. You know, even though he can't do anything really and also you hate him but leave him in charge sure something immediately happens and which is that there's two people parasailing i really appreciated that they wrote parasailing on the side of the boat so it wouldn't confuse me this time i think they i think that he knew i was struggling yeah with pretty that sure they, and put it in there they went back and re-edited the movie with that in there. i think they did they're like oh, they're gonna do this at some point and i don't want her to be confused about if this is parasailing or gliding um and they see the, the yeah they're parasailing they're up in there woohoo and there's like a bunch of people on the boat partying along with a little child who was like mean mugging the rest of the adults for some reason um it was funny but i wasn't really sure like why the child was there but it's fine um they see the shark coming up and attacking the boat and so like the whole thing with the shark is that it's radioactive so when it comes out of the water its body starts to become unstable it's also always on fire its skin kind of looks like you know like a burned patient sort of sometimes and so like when the shark surfaces whatever it touches immediately catches on fire so the shark comes up on the boat it catches on fire catches everybody on fire and everyone's like screaming <laughs> Rocks. the people in the boat are like d like dying getting eaten and the parasailers are just like watching this is when Kaplan decides that he's gonna try and swim out and save them even though he like has that knee injury that is suddenly gone for the rest of the movie now uh and um they're like no no come back or whatever and so essentially what happens is that the fire s gets on the rope and spreads up and then just like engulfs them and engulfs them very <laughs> fast and they die and burn um very good then very good death. he yeah, so Kaplan comes back up to the shore and is like, oh, I couldn't get out there or whatever. And Kylie is, like, fake crying about what happened. I'm not really sure, like, what was going on with her. Um, yeah, oh. I, I don't really... I did not understand that part either, like, why she's just, like, pretending to cry. I don't know. Uh, it was very weird. Um, then Gina... But, me what if... What if that was just the actress, like, practicing acting, but she forgot she was on camera? <laughs> she did realize Maybe. they were filming. Yeah, because, <laughs> like, essentially she's like, oh, my God, how could this happen? And then a wave comes and, like, washes over them, and she's like, hee, hee, hee. And I was like, what is happening here? <laughs> um, Gina, meanwhile, is, like, confronting the boat guy and is like, something crazy is happening out there, and I need you to take me out there. And he's like, no, fuck you, I hate you, go away. He's, like, extremely mean to her about it. Which, again, I was it was confusing. The boss comes back from the hospital and is mad at Kaplan because of what happened. Um, my question is... So, basically, he's saying that... It, Kaplan is like, something fucked up happened out there, okay? The shark was on fire, everything was on fire. And he's like, I left you alone for 30 minutes, and now there's five people dead and one person injured or whatever... And then he's like, the feds called me and said there was an engine fire. And I was like, okay, let's just wrap around here. Because how is any of that Kaplan's fault? Eh, like, maybe he what was he fire. supposed... Aside from that, how... And he's like, engines don't just blow up. And I was like, I don't know. I've seen a lot of movies where engines blow up. So yeah. I'm just saying. Easily. Everything I know That's about all they life do. is for movies. So I'm assuming all engines blow up. I... I think so. Um, okay. Temperature above 80 degrees, your car's going to explode. Yeah. Yeah, you never know. Um, so they argue a little bit about it, and he's like, this is a cover-up, and he's just like, you know what, you're fired for real. He's fired now. Um, then Kaplan goes around to everybody on the beach and tells them that he's been fired for whatever <laughs> reason. Um, the environmental people um, then see a bunch of the charred fish all over the floor of the ocean, the beach. 
And uh, then a bunch of people in hazmat suits come on and, like, collect. Now um, we're introduced to this TV show called Chumageddon. Hell yeah. Where... Great name. I will watch this show. Wait. Maybe... This is Griff first, not the boss. I think I had it wrong. Okay, this, no this says this guy's name is Skip Forte, and I remember them calling him Mr. Forte. So this is the director, my B. It's Will Forte. This is Griff Last. Will Forte. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, it's a show called Chumageddon where this guy is a celebrity. He comes to a restaurant and he chews, and then he tries to decide what's in the food and if it's good or not, right? So um, they show just like a very brief like internet thing about it. Meanwhile, G- Gina Kaplan and the two environmental people are sitting in a restaurant where they've brought one of the radioactive fish um, in, a con- in a cooler to use a Geiger counter on to see if it's radioactive. And guess what it is? Yeah, glad they, glad and, they brought it to a restaurant to do this. Right. And then they're like, um, should we be like sitting here with the fish if it's radioactive? And she's like, oh, maybe not. And she takes it away or whatever. <laughs> there's, there's like um the tv there's like a like a long section of this where like the tv crew is like giving them instructions telling the owner like what's supposed to be going on or whatever and um then they go outside to film the chumageddon guy eating uh where he's basically just like okay what do you what do you have for me and he's like oh yeah today we have the mahi mahi it's got this that and the other thing and he's like don't tell me what's in it he's just like a diva like you know it's a real stereotypical going on here but like me but like a jerk right so then they switch out the dishes he's like try again and at this point he's like having kind of a hard time swallowing and he's just like just like struggling a little bit and um Meanwhile, like inside, Gina is watching everybody else eating the the fish and and stuff that's being served, and she's starting to realize that like, if the shark is swimming around and they found those fish contaminated, all of the fish are probably contaminated. And she's like, "Oh no!" And like as this is happening, the food critic guy starts to like bloat really bad, and he's like <laughs> turning red, and like eventually he just like fucking explodes. And um, it's pretty gross. It rules. Like he like we, he explodes. <laughs> we said earlier he like falls behind the table so you can't see him, and then when he pops out, he's blatantly a different person. <laughs> <laughs> totally different guy. Um, and then him exploding, his like viscera like knocks the other guy into the water or whatever. It was crazy. And um, our main group uh, run out of the restaurant uh, as the chef walks inside like walks it from in from the kitchen also just on fire for some reason. And then the entire restaurant explodes. Um, but it only goes down half a star. So that's not bad for your whole restaurant exploding. Yeah. yeah. Pretty good. Um, Gina and Kaplan go to tell their boss that they need to close the beach, but he's not listening to them obviously. And um, then for some reason, Gina starts wrestling him yeah, and then they strange. run away. I was like, what She's the like fuck is going on here? And, they leave. and then they literally like run away. Um, okay. This is when they they are trying to um, think of a plan to find the shark. And what they want to do is attach the Geiger counter to the drone and then fly it out there. Um, but the boss like ruined the drone, so they need to find another one. This is when they see the pervert drone that's been following all the ladies around uh, <laughs> in the sky. So they watch it to see where it goes, and it ends up going to this abandoned hotel that they go to. Okay, um, this is where they meet um, David Faustino, and uh, he's basically just like flies his drone around to take videos of women on the beach and then he like puts them online also he's into hairy chests or something like that too I don't know um and so they (laughs) um they a yes that you are they they go back and forth about like 
where are the cops? And he was like, no, you're the lifeguard. Whatever. They make friends, right? And so he basically shows them the live stream that he was watching of the marina when the Atomic Shark Lake went into view and it, like, messed up all the equipment or whatever. And so they see it. And they're like, oh, shit. Um, Then there's, like, the scene where... Um, the boss, like, is gross to Kylie and, like, comes on to her and basically says, like, if you don't do what I want you to do, like, I'm gonna fire you. And he tells her to go in the water because they they want to show everybody that it's safe. And he's, like, treating the beach like it's, like, a business. <laughs> I just, and I was like, I just, it's just a public beach. Just like that he's like, people respect us. And I'm just like, no, they don't. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I've ever been to a beach and been like, well, if the lifeguards aren't in the water, I'm not getting in the water. Yeah. Listen, as far as I'm concerned, the lifeguards are also narcs because they don't want you to be doing anything yeah. fun. AK so, means yeah, the, uh, literally, actually. Hey, lab. Yeah. <laughs> so um, she does. She goes in the water and she's like, haha, water's nice. Um, then we get some guy that says YOLO, literally YOLO. And swims out, way out into the water, and gets attacked by the atomic shark. Um, This one's, like, not super graphic either. He just kind of, like, bites him in half, and they show, like, a drone aerial view of, like, his body being in two pieces. Um, Then they show... Oh, for some... Oh, they call, like, the environmental crisis people, for some reason, to the abandoned hotel. They show up, they show the footage, and... um, I don't know what that says. Somebody <laughs> says, um, it looks like it says Peru, which is nobody's name. Well, they are in Peru in this movie. No, they're not. San Diego, Peru. <laughs> oh, perv. Oh, I, it's perv. Um, David <laughs> Faustino. <laughs> Nailed it. David Faustino says. Peruvian David Faustino. <laughs> It's like David Faustino, but the Peruvian version. Must have must have married with children had a Peruvian Spicy. version. Okay. <laughs> um, says that uh, he thinks what happened is that off the coast of San Diego, which is where they are, um, a subatomic, no, an atomic sub sank into the water and has been leaking radiation. And so that's probably what happened. Oh, it's weird okay. that they put a radioactive sandwich in the sea. Yeah, it is weird. They should have just ate it. Can we talk yeah. about how there were two different episodes of Married with Children <laughs> dealing with one with Peruvian stinging beetles and one with a Peruvian <laughs> devil gerbil. The gerbil sounds delightful. I don't know Yeah, where bites Marcy, the... causing her to develop some sort of eye infection or some shit. I gotta, I gotta rewatch Married with Children. Yeah, I I, what a great show. I watched it like, I like, I binged the whole thing like a little bit before, maybe like three, four months before moving to New Jersey, and doesn't really hold up. Yeah, still pretty funny, sad. but like you get to a point about like there's thirteen seasons and like seven of them are really kind of only worth watching. Yeah. Uh, that, I feel like that's the case for any show that goes past that mark and even then yeah that's fair it's like well always sunny has held up pretty well for 14 seasons well that's a little i, I, that's I feel like an exception i feel like there's like current shows are a little more like like it's always sunny seems like it's not fucked with by like studios as much as like so you know sitcoms of shit were back in the day right major major network yeah like fox and stuff Boo. Katie, when are you going to watch It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? I, uh, to be honest with you, never. Rude. Sad. I've seen a few episodes and it's just not my humor. Yeah, you should see a few hundred more. Yeah, you should just <laughs> watch all of them to see if. You really got to get to like through like season 15 or so to, to really get the show. Really? Yeah. Get a <laughs> grasp I think on I, it. I just like really, for some reason don't gravitate towards comedies about like a group of people just like shitty people doing shitty things <laughs> yeah like i didn't like 
How I Met Your Mother. I didn't like the New Girl. Well, like anything. Because those shows are bad. Well, yeah. I was going to say that's. <laughs> those like, are just bad shows. Like the dynamic of like a bunch of. I don't know. I'm just like not into friends, I guess. I don't. I didn't like. I don't like. I don't like well, shows about people. You heard it, you heard it here friends. first, folks. Katie, Katie is anti friendship. <laughs> yes, I am. Good news is. I don't think anyone on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia are friends. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think they all actively um, hate each other. <laughs> I don't like that either. Real question. <laughs> I want now, less. now, now that season three is dropping tonight, as when we're recording this, when the fuck are you gonna watch? I think you should leave. Ugh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I gotta, I... I gotta resub the Netflix. Fuck, fuck me. I know. We've just kept ours long enough for me to like get a couple watches into the new season <laughs> i don't know if i have the energy to do that yeah. but there are no friends every episode's only like 11 okay, minutes <laughs> yeah i don't know I, I i i feel as if i'm in the throes of um, losing netflix because we got that it is not our netflix right yeah, and we got that like thing bullshit. that the was warning like, um but we said um, not now. And they were like, well, if you, if you don't set up a home network, we might do it for you. And we were like, well, if you do, you do. So maybe we own it now. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, you own Netflix? Yes. Make it Free cheaper. Netflix yeah, then why don't you just everyone? get rid of that fucking, uh, <laughs> that rule? <laughs> I know, it's so stupid. Um, jeez. Okay, radioactive sub. Delicious. Uh, okay, so there's some back and forth about, you know, the drone because they're custom made, this, that, and the other thing. They mount the Geiger counter to the drone and fly it out above the water and they find the shark. The boss sees the drone and is really pissed off about it and, like, runs down a dock and then jumps on a jet ski. And I love how they, like, cut it because, like, that probably wasn't him on the jet ski, but they, like, cut it in a way that was, like, very funny to me. Pretty sure it was um, Goes out on the jet ski. Uh, they've seen the shark. And so Gina is on the radio like, shark, shark, there's a shark. But nobody is, like, listening or responding. And he's like, you don't have the authority to use this radio or whatever. Oh, because he fired her after they wrestled. I forgot that part. Finally, Kylie sees the shark. Um, this is when the boss slow-mo rides up to the shark with some kind of shark cannon gun thing. And he, like, jumps off of it and does, like, a gladiator, like, leap into the air. But the shark just, like, eats him, I guess, because it just, like, dis he just, like, disappears. I was like, okay. <laughs> so he's dead anyway. Um, d This is a scene that we were talking about that was very strange where Kylie is like, there's a shark, there's a shark, come on, come on. And there's a guy in the water that thinks she's, like, come hithering him. And there's, like, cat heart eye emojis on the screen. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, it's very weird. Um, but he get he just gets eaten. Um, and then the drone crashes in, uh, you know, whatever. This is when the shark jumps up onto the land to uh, basically explode Kylie and, like, that little boy. <laughs> yeah, the little boy's, like, buried himself or somebody buried him up to the neck in sand. Yeah, and he's so he's just, just like, like, chilling. Flirting with her, and the shark just pops up and, like, I think eats. Does he eat Kylie, or does she just like get landed on? I can't remember. I think she just gets. I couldn't tell. I honestly, it's <laughs> and same difference. The shark just kind of like flops around there for a minute, and the kid's head just explodes from radiation. It rocks. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking rips. And then it just like shows basically where the shark like waddles back into the water. <laughs> Everything is just on fire. It's so good. Um. Gina says that the sh she's basically figured it figured out the science. She says that the shark needs the seawater to cool it down, otherwise it will overheat and explode, and that's a problem because um, if it explodes, it'll like destroy everything. And she's worried because the military will just show up and shoot it, and so yeah, it'll explode. And so she's like, "We got to figure something out." So the plan is that. The plan is that they're going to lure the shark out to open water uh, using two boats, uh, the boat that they're on and then a decoy boat, and they're going to explode it, right? So Gina goes to the boat guy and for help, and this is when they reveal that it's actually her dad. And um, then they have sort of a heart-to-heart. -heart. They don't 
they they're not really like revealing what happened <laughs> at all here. Um, but then he decides to help, so it's, it's fine. It's so weird because they make it seem like it's this like big revelation, and I'm just like, yeah. I honestly could not care less if these two are related. It makes oh. no like bearing it, on the plot whatsoever. Right, and it also is not explained at all. So it's like, who cares? Um, and then, so he's like, okay, what's the plan? And then she says, it involves blowing up your boat. And then he just goes, perfect. And I was like, all right. <laughs> this dude's um, definitely got some sort of insurance scam going. A hundred percent. He made the shark to collect insurance on his boat. Um, so then they're kind of just like talking about like how <laughs> That'd be big... a way better movie. That'd be a five star movie. <laughs> there you go. I'm telling I made you. this shark as part of my fucking insurance fraud. <laughs> I mean, insurance fraud shark. Um, <laughs> There's an idea. Look, well, He's I don't, getting hit by cars. The fact that sci-fi has not, he's getting hit by cars. <laughs> like, falling in front of it's, him, like, ah, you hit it's me. It's one of those one of those bridges where, like, like, it goes over, like, the ocean to, like, an island or whatever. And it's just, like, jumping out in front of the cars going over the bridge. Yeah. <laughs> Look, a lot of great movies this episode. Sci-Fi Channel's really yeah. fucking up. I seriously cancel we're, Chucky. We're here we're give ready. us that money. Cancel Chucky. <laughs> it's the only thing I know it's currently on Sci-Fi Channel. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. Um. Okay, so they're basically talking about like their whole plan or whatever, and they're talking about how, um, they're talking about how powerful the explosive explosion would be, and she just is basically like if. If the shark explodes over here, it will destroy the coast, right? Then she says it would be the equivalent to one million tons of dynamite, which, again, means nothing to me. I have no idea <laughs> what that yeah. would be like. You got to put that in, like, in, in terms of, like, M80s for me. Yeah, I, I mean... How many M80s like, would that be? I understand... <laughs> I, I don't know. What? I don't have my M80 calculator what? up. How many? How, how much dynamite did you say it was? One million tons. All right, let me see if I can find a conversion for that. Okay. I mean, I understand what an atomic bomb is, is in theory, right? So. Um, but the explosion is such that they only have two and a half minutes to get as far away from the explosion as possible to survive so um they set out uh on two different boats the boys are on this like little race boat and they have the dad boat dad's boat and the boys chum the water and the environmental crisis guy is live streaming of course um I'm confused about a lot of the stuff that happens during this plan. So originally, like, the atomic shark comes. He's lured by the chum, right? And um, they throw what I think are the air their air tanks into the water to try and explode the shark. Yeah, they're just like oxygen tanks. But it's not working. And then all of a sudden, one of them explodes and kills four... Bud Bundy. He's dead. R.I.P. <laughs> R.I.P. to the perv. And also then the shark eats them. Him. Um, and everyone's sad about it. Then, um, because they've been chumming the waters, all of a sudden a, lo a bunch, like hundreds of regular sharks just <laughs> swarm at them i did not know what the fuck was happening here yeah. i like I looked away for two minutes and looked up and there was a billion sharks and was like wait what like I, one what of happened? them one of them just yells they're cut they're the chum is attracting them there's literally hundreds of them just like <laughs> swimming at them and pummeling the boats i was like what um while this is happening they're like ah and you're like they're getting knocked around or whatever the um, environmental crisis guy is like live streaming on a t on on like an iPad. He's got like a whole ass tablet, and he stands up to try and like live stream all of the sharks. And one of the sharks jumps up and smacks him into the water and eats him. <laughs> so uh, see ya. I love like one of the the there's some like there's, maybe there's like two of the trivia things was just this dude outraged at the idea that. Uh, 
this this stream somehow is four four million people watching when like yeah. most of it is just an iPad that would not have internet access all the way out there and also is just like laying face down yeah. on the boat most of the time. <laughs> I was about to say that because he's like he's like walking back and forth because Felice is on the other boat and then he'll be like, Are you guys seeing this? And it's just like the iPad laying flat down and I was like, No, they're not. <laughs> Nobody would be watching this. Anyways, he gets eaten. Goodbye. Um, then they go inside and they're like, okay, the plane's not working. We're going to rig uh, Boat Dad's boat. Um, they've got a bunch of dynamite. And um, he's basically like, okay, Felice, let's go. And she's like, no, I can't live without whatever that guy's name was. He was my, blah, she, I love him. She fucking she's like in bonkers very quickly. She's crazy. So she's like inconsolable and he just like leaves and is like, okay, she's not coming. And so Gina goes down to try and talk to her and immediately Felice like attacks her and is like punching her and throwing her around and stuff. And I was like, what? Why? And she's like, this is all your fault. And like, it's not whatever. It's very weird. So, so essentially she's just like, okay, I don't know. You need to like fucking get it together either come with us or you're gonna die and she's like okay okay i'm cool i'm cool and so she goes to like help her up and then atomic shark just like (laughs) oh oh, through the bottom of the boat (laughs) i skipped over the scene where basically um felice is like i'm gonna go down and i'm taking you with me and she's like holding gina down in front of the dynamite and she's got a lighter that she's trying to light the dynamite but the, the we talked about this in the beginning. The lighter keeps blowing out, and every time the light comes on, the music's like, and then it blows out, <laughs> and it's silent, and it happens a few times. It was actually pretty funny. It's pretty good. Um, so yeah, and then she's like, "Stop! You're being crazy!" And she's like, "Okay, fine." Uh, yeah. So then the atomic shark just busts through the bottom of the boat and takes her, and she's she's gone. Uh, Gina's like, oh my god, and she runs, you know, like, up onto the deck to get off of the boat, and then, uh, Boat Dad immediately also gets taken by the shark. Sure. Uh, so now it's just Gina and Kaplan. They are on this small little boat. They only have one bundle of dynamite, and they're like, okay, it's fine, like, we can still make this work, it'll be okay, like, we'll do this, we'll do that, and then the other boat just explodes, and they're like, okay, um, that's not going to work anymore. And Kaplan's like, this, from here on out, Kaplan is like extremely goofy for no reason. And he's just like, well, I think that probably would have worked. Hey, he's in but love. like, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, serious love only, okay? I don't want goofy. Just kidding. What if it's the character goofy in love? I'm okay with that. <laughs> um,. I don't, like, understand the plan that they hatch at all. She explains it, and then she's like, does that make any sense? And he's like, um, not really. And I'm also like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't know what she's saying. But she basically is, um, the motor to the other boat is just, like, on a lifeboat. And so she's going to get an air tank and put it on and dry ride the engine of the boat down into the water to where the shark is and then she's going to be holding dynamite maybe I'm not really sure he somehow has like this cable that she has that's running all the way to him and he's supposed to put the cable on a battery and then somehow that's supposed to cause an explosion I have no idea what is even happening here yeah it's called science um then there's like the science guy shit happening yeah it's (laughs) Too scholarly for me. Um, then there's, like, a moment where they're, like, staring at each other, and there's, like, music, and Kaplan goes to kiss Gina, and she's like, ew, gross, what are you doing? He's like, oh, sorry, I thought we were having a moment. And she was like, no. Um, so then, uh, this looks insane also, uh, but she gets on the boat engine and rides down into the depths of the ocean on it. Um... That sounds really simple, but it looked so insane. (laughs) Uh, She's riding towards the atomic shark. um, And once it gets to her, she lets go of her little, like, air tank. Uh, And so he's supposed to blow them up, I think. But the cable that he's supposed to attach to the battery is too short. And it ends up not working. 
And she's face to face with the atomic shark. So she just takes the engine and uses the propeller to cut the shark up and get away. Um, like Kaplan is trying to use the drone to dump bait, uh, not bait. Yeah. Bait, but chum, the chum in the water. And then he also like dumps it on himself and jumps in the water to like lure it away from Gina, but it's not working. Um, so Gina starts swimming. She's swimming towards like a little Island that's out there and the shark follows her and she gets up on land and the shark just like flop, flop wops up there and is like catching stuff flop on fire <laughs> and is like, blah, 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 you know, like flop around. And, um, she is able to jump in the water and swim away. Right. She swims somehow back to the boat um, the shark has jumped so far onto the land at this point. He's like, he, he can't get away. Right. And the brush is, is burning all around him. They use the rest of the oxygen tanks. They like hold, they like strap them onto the back of the boat so that, that, that it will like propel the boat away from the Island. And then the shark and the Island explode atomically. And there's like the face of an angry shark in the explosion <laughs> very good touch <laughs> yeah that should have been the cover honestly um then there's a photo of gina as a child floating in the water that was from her dad's boat or whatever and now she's like okay fine she and kaplan kiss but uh immediately start coughing because it's very foggy because of the atomic explosion that just happened and then underwater, they show, um, I don't know, just like a regular shark swim around, but like to menacing music. And then it's the end. <laughs> I was like, okay. I don't know how you don't end this movie on the shark smoke from the fire. Right. I, I don't know. Um, but yeah. Uh, so, I don't know. It was fine. It was fine got way better deaths than most of the I don't know I, I think there was I don't know mm, there was still a lot of cutaways which I thought was like come on no, I mean it's still a TV movie they only had so much budget <laughs> yeah Look, I got to see excuse. at least three people like where the shark jumped out bit them in half but then came back for the legs so and a dude pulled half a body out of the water. It was like, oh, just drop it back in. So, I'm good. And that kid's head exploded. And that, yeah. that one guy became a whole other person. So, Zerika, does Erica know about this one? I've, I've messaged her about it. <laughs> I was like, I know you have an ongoing list, so here you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alright, do you look up any news, Katie? I didn't really see anything, to be honest. Yeah, let's... Uh, the only thing I saw was that they are bringing um, a killer whale kaiju movie to the U.S. for the first time. Oh, it's from the 60s. It's called The oh, Whale yeah. God. It looks sick. Yeah. I feel like fucking every like horror website right now is just like writing the fucking shittiest articles. Yeah, and it's all like... I saw one that was I like, don't... seven things we learned from the audio commentary on this Blu-ray, and it's like, come on. Yeah, and then it's like, revisit 1988's Night of the Demons. Like, okay, or who... Or just 200 headlines that are just like, the hottest show on Netflix being described as pretty good by Stephen King. <laughs> yeah, it's just all like, opinion fluff pieces at this point. I feel like I haven't seen like, real a lot of actual um new stuff oh, you can but... see the first footage from the walking dead daryl dixon spinoff oh show. my god that's okay <laughs> i'm okay with that that's what we need, what we need. uh all right what did everybody watch this week katie what'd you watch this week um i actually did watch a few things i um not a lot of great stuff, but I did watch some things. So I finished um, Anne with an E, which was a Netflix series based on Anne of Green Gables that is, you know, set in like the eight, late 1800s, which is like totally my thing. And it's such a, 
It's about like a younger girl, so it's like you know, I don't know. It was extremely cute. Um, so if you like eighteen hundreds life, who doesn't? Things, I mean, it was very cute, and it did end up getting canceled, which um, no shocker because it was a Netflix. But they did actually end it, kind of. So I'm happy about that. Um, then I watched the invitation from 2022 which was like a vampire, the vampire movie. one yeah um it wasn't my favorite yeah, it's real dumb i i <laughs> i really i liked the idea behind it i am like such a sucker obviously for like vampire stuff but the ending i'm gonna spoil the ending right now so if you haven't seen it and you care about it it's fine the ending is really unrealistic to me because this woman basically has a chance to be like a vampire sister wife and she decides she doesn't want to do that like who wouldn't and she's just like now and then she just like kills everybody i was like that's (laughs) stupid nobody would choose that anyway whatever it was fine uh then i finally watched emily the criminal uh which was uh aubrey plaza movie it was okay Again, like, whatever. And then I wa- finally watched um, Velvet Buzzsaw. Oh, God. Uh, like I said, I'm trying to, like, go through my Netflix, like, list because I'm, like, I don't know how much longer I have access to it or whatever. Um, th- so that was a 2019 Jake Gyllenhaal movie about artwork, quote-unquote, killing people. And, again, I really liked the idea behind it, but I they didn't really pull it off very well for me. Um, then I watched El Camino, the Breaking Bad movie. Um, probably the best actual movie that I've watched because it was just like... Uh, so if it's like Better Call Saul mostly takes place before and then after and then Breaking Bad and then El Camino is what happens immediately after Breaking Bad um, focusing around Jesse. So like... It was pretty good. Um, I think. Anyways. Um, and then. Well, I mean, it was also a Netflix original, so I wasn't really sure how to feel about it, even though it was just a movie. But I think they did a pretty good job. My absolute favorite thing about it, and they did this in Better Call Saul, too, is that, like, they had um, Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul playing themselves, but it's been, like, I don't know, 20 years. And Aaron Paul was, like, young a lot younger like everyone else pretty much looks the same because they're they were like at that age where you just like look you're like 50 and then you look Mm. 50 for forever you know what i mean but aaron paul was like pretty young so now he's like i don't know like 45 pretending to be a teenager and it's hilarious to me i love that they just like didn't de-age them or didn't address it they're just like here they are it's the same people i like actually really thought it was funny i liked it and then i watched this then i watched Oof. Then I watched the to be original 2023 remake of the Amityville Curse, <laughs> and um, five, five stars, right? So, woof. Uh, no, I, we kind of talked about maybe doing a mini episode on this, but I don't really think we need to. It was um. Essentially, the only thing it's it's a remake in that. So the Amityville Curse was that the fourth one or the third? Something like that. It wasn't the third. I think it was at least fourth or fifth. Yeah. So essentially, that was like one of the last ones that we were like. It was extremely boring, but it was like fine. And it's basically just that a group of people purchase the Amityville house together to renovate it. And in this one, they're doing that where they purchase the house to renovate it to make it condominiums. And um, that's like the end of the similarities. Like they just took that idea and remade it. Um, And it's pretty boring. Um, There's not a lot of ghost stuff that happens. Uh, When the ghosts show up, they look terrible. I sent you a Snapchat of it, actually. And um, essentially, like... The plot of it is that the house makes people, like... Hungry. Yes. <laughs> they, they make so many subs. That's the and curse. they were delicious. Um, they turn it into, like, a, a weird, like, demonic thing. And then, basically, the ghosts just whisper to people that they're um, 
not worthy and then that they should um like just d- like kill themselves essentially and so they do but it's like I don't know. It's just really stupid. And then at the end, like maybe one of the girls is possessed by the house, but they don't explain it or like tell us why or go into it at all. And so, um, how long? I felt like this movie was so long. Probably like an hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> it was, it doesn't even say I am like it's an hour and 30. It's like 90 minutes. One thirty. Okay. I am one of 10 people who have rated this movie or logged it on letterbox or whatever. So, um, yeah, I don't don't recommend. I like it wasn't even good enough. It wasn't funny in any capacity for us to talk about it. So that's literally it. Then I watched a movie from 1996 called Fear. Yeah. That starred Mark Wahlberg. You don't have to tell people what Fear is. Everybody knows what Fear is. Yeah. I've never heard of it. There's an It's Always Sunny joke about it. Really? You you yeah, literally have not heard of this movie before? No, I've never heard oh of it. Oh my god, like what? I feel like Reese Witherspoon getting like fingered on that ride is like in like every horror movie documentary. Yeah. No, I literally never heard oh, of that, it. Oh, that yeah, that movie life. was very popular in the 90s. Well, yeah. I just watched it today. It was okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't I'm know. not a fan. I have it on VHS just cuz I found it at a thrift store, but Again, I, I don't know like maybe uh, it's okay fair I know I, I somehow had never heard of it um if I had seen it at the time I think I probably would have liked it better because I feel like this movie follows a trope that's like oh the dad doesn't like the boyfriend and then the boyfriend's a psycho or whatever like okay you know what I mean like I don't know whatever um gotta say Mark Wahlberg so, not a good actor <laughs> Yeah. Not a good anything. Yeah. And also, like... It's a piece of shit. Yeah. Half of, like, them... So, like, the whole thing is that he's supposed to be acting like he's, um, you know, like, Mr. Perfect. And he's, like, got manners. And then all of a sudden he switches and there's, like, this dark side that nobody saw coming. I saw it the moment you sh- he showed up. I'm like, mm-mm. He looks like a void of a person like I you're not uh, anyway I don't know maybe people didn't know that at the time he looks he's crazy um and um I think that's it all right Kit what about you uh see I watched Death Warrant the Jean-Claude Van Damme film about a Mountie going into prison undercover and it was really boring yeah Um, (laughs) Way... I mean, he's a Mountie. How much trouble is he going to get into? Right? It's so much worse than that plot description lets you think it is. Uh, then I watched Reform School, Reform School Girls. That's pretty good. Which fucking rips. Yeah. A plus. A plus film. Fucking, Wendy O. Williams. The, uh, the fucking, like... I guess she's not the warden, but the lady that's just, like, constantly punishing them is so good in that movie. Yeah. She's just such a piece <laughs> so of good. shit. Like her at the top of the fucking thing as it's burning up at the end. Yes. Incredible. And then I watched Death Machines, which is <laughs> also pretty good. It uh, it went back and forth between like being needlessly boring to having like solid twenty to twenty five minute chunks of like insane nonsense kung fu. <laughs> like guys aren't throwing any punches. It's all kicks fucking wiping out uh an entire like karate school like just three three grown men go in there and just slaughter a bunch of like young adults with swords hell yeah Hmm. pretty good where you at on 90 day fiance uh i think i'm towards the end of season eight i don't know how many episodes are in a season i'm on like episode 10 or something (laughs) um jovi jovi's a real piece of shit jovi's a real winner (laughs) Uh, every everyone in this season like fucking sucks it's, and it rules it's kind of how the last couple seasons have been where like everybody's either infuriatingly shitty like Jovi or you get the couples where you're just like I can tell you're only doing this because you want to be like TikTok stars right um, I forget which season or show it is but there's like this couple where one of the dudes is like trying to be like a a famous rapper or some shit 
and like but he's still like living at home and he lives in like idaho or something it's fucking <laughs> absurd but you could tell that like the like him and his fiance are like desperate to be like instagram famous right and like i'm just like yes yeah, this is the only reason you're on this fucking show yep uh so good there's a <laughs> there's the lady that uh she's dating a dude in belize i think and he like just never answers her call or talks to her or whatever so she flies over there like mid pandemic and uh she she's like talking about him cheating on her or whatever and a psychic told her about it this that whatever <laughs> and uh they have a big fight and he like leaves and she's like all right well i'm gonna call up his cousin and go fuck his cousin oh and yes she's like i know you're calling talking about <laughs> calling her psychic and is like should i should i go fuck his cousin and the psychic's like uh, probably <laughs> <laughs> definitely incredible incredible television i remember i completely forgot about that lady she's i was fucking nuts insane <laughs> she fucking rules um most of the movies i watched this week were just sort of like comfort rewatches just because fucking i hate work but i watched all the jurassic park movies and i gotta say new ones hot garbage all oh three my god of them. so bad well <laughs> I, I like the first one. The other ones were literally, like, some of the worst things I've ever it's, seen. It's and normal. I think that says a lot. <laughs> like, not even worth your time, honestly. It's They're just so fucking bland. Like... Yeah, terrible. Not even the original crew coming back in Dominion could save it. It's... it's no. Mm -mm. One of the worst, like, sort of big blockbuster movies I've ever seen. Yeah. Very bad. Um, I think that's it. I watched... I got one more movie in the Bollywood horror crypt box set done. That was pretty good. Uh, not sure how to pronounce this in Indian, but I think it's just The Dungeon in English. And it's uh, very weird. Had a lot of black magic and a weird creature in it. And... Every movie in this box set is like two and a half hours long. It's, it's brutal. <laughs> They're so fucking <laughs> long. Like, when your movie has an intermission in it, you know it's too yeah. long. Which, part of me, like, respects that, like, and, like they're making these movies where they're like, well, if you're going to come pay to see this, you're getting your money's worth. But right. they're so long. And it's mostly because there's, like, ten songs every fucking movie. But so far, the three I've watched, all pretty good. Like, they, uh, I think they're all the same director that did Maha Call, and, like, the special effects are pretty incredible for, like, India in, like, the 70s or whatever. Like, surprisingly, pretty, pretty great special effects. Uh, and then we're in the middle of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Where we're like two episodes away from this woman getting arrested uh, for committing fraud on the elderly in like 10 states. And is like actually pretty recently like went to jail for six and a half years for committing Hell a bunch yeah. of fraud. And like I, I can't like I was trying to look up to like see what episode like she actually gets arrested in just cuz like the like they start the season teasing that and then it's like six or something episodes of just like regular real housewives bullshit and I was like I need to see where this is at cuz like I'm dying to see this and I kept seeing people be like no joke the her getting arrested is maybe one of the greatest moments in like a reality TV and I was like I can't fucking wait like they introduced the season with all of them getting on like a bus like they're getting ready to go on like every fucking season of a Real Housewives show we've watched there's like one big trip that they all go on like vacation for and for some reason like most of them they're like we're gonna travel by bus and so they're all <laughs> sure why not they, well they'll rent like a fucking party bus and like have someone drive them like four states away it's baffling I don't know but they're all getting on the bus and this woman's just like uh I gotta go and, like, gets in this car, and she, like, peels out, and, like, a couple seconds later, like, 
10 FBI police cars pull up. <laughs> and they're just like, what the fuck is happening? And they're like, yeah, we're looking for her. She's like, like under arrest for committing a shit ton of crimes. <laughs> Hell yeah. It fucking rocks. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> um, all right. Shout out. TV's so good. Yes. I, I like a decade ago, I fucking hated reality TV, except for like the flavor of love, et cetera, universe. Now it's like all I watch is these shitty ass fucking garbage TV shows because I, I can't like, I hit a point because I used to watch a lot of those like prestige sort of Breaking Bad ish type shows, and I just hit this point, and especially like once like the pandemic started, where I was like, I can't deal with all this fucking stupid bleak, depressing TV shows anymore. They stress me out. I'm just gonna watch people be fucking stupid. Like 90 Day Fiance. <laughs> but also, 90 Day Fiance, at least. At least there's always at least like one couple per season where I'm like, I'm gonna root for y'all. You seem like a good couple. There's a very right. cool, like, trans person in like the new season of The Other Way that just seems like a genuinely cool person. And I'm like, I hope you have a good life. Everyone Hell else yeah. this season, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Katie, shout out. Um, so we, <laughs> shout out to the youths. So we went out, we went to the show last week for my husband's birthday and, um, everybody, we were, we've been the oldest people at shows for like a little while now. Right. Because like, for some reason it's always like people in their early twenties. Cause like, you know, everyone else has realized that going to shows is terrible. It was actually a very, very fun time. It was like a very small venue downtown. Um, and everybody was dressed like it was 2000. Again, there was fishnets. There were somebody, there was somebody legit looked like he was dressed like, um, Justin Timberlake, he had frosted tips. Fuck yeah. And like baggy, baggy, not Jinkos, but like akin to Jinkos. And like, it just was such a, it was just so fun. Um, and I just love that they're just like doing everything that we used to do, but then pretending like we're not cool. Um, love it. <laughs> Keep doing you, babes. Um, the show was Even they're not really wrong, good. We're not cool. Uh, we're the coolest. Um, it was <laughs> Panchico was the headliner. They were really good. Um, LSD and the Search for God, and then Horse Jumper of Love, and they were all extremely good and fun live. Yeah, pretty sure you so, made all those up. I didn't make any of them up. Um, <laughs> they were all really good, uh, and so I don't know. Take from any of that what you will. Yeah. Uh... Let Kit and I know if those are real bands, because we're pretty we're right. pretty sure Katie made those up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about you, Kit? Uh, all right, I've got two. Oh. Yeah. So first, new Dark Side of the Ring this week. Get hype. Uh, as like the new season starting, or is it just like new? I I've. Yep, new season. I have to, like, watch them when they air on, like, Vice's fucking website. It's always such a pain in the ass. And I'm like, I'm just going to wait till it's all out. <laughs> well, maybe it'll be easier since Vice is bankrupt now. Yeah, or hopefully. Like, I mean, Ooh. someone usually tends to put them on YouTube, but they're always so badly edited to YouTube that, like... Right. I'm always like, this is just not worth it. I'll wait till they're all on Hulu or some shit. Alright, and then, uh... Negative, negative shout out. <laughs> I like you bringing uh, the Rob... negative shout outs every Always. episode now. Yeah, I've, I've been cranky. I've been cranky this year. Uh, <laughs> Rob Savage has a new movie coming out this yeah, Friday. Don't pass. go see Boo. it. Boo, it looks stupid anyway. All, all I, I, I kept seeing shit. I was like, what's this fucking Stephen King movie that all of a sudden everybody won't shut up about? And then I was like, oh, directed by Rob Savage. Do not need to pretend to pay attention to this. <laughs> yep. Mm-mm. Uh, I thought it looked stupid before I even like I, saw that it was him, and then I was like, even more yeah. reason to not. Yeah, I saw the name and I was like, oh. I don't, I don't <laughs> know the story, and like, I just, I, I'm just like, I don't know, like, stop, stop making Stephen King movies for a while. They're not good. They always end badly. Just stop. 
Like, give it a break. No. It's just like, I like, the <laughs> fucking stupid, like, the It remakes blew up, and now they're just like, what if we just made every fucking story Stephen King has ever written into a movie? Well, good news. Uh, that Pet Cemetery reboots prequel thing that they were planning on doing has just like vanished from the face of the earth good. so oh good who like who <laughs> would fucking ever want that <laughs> like i don't know we didn't like two years one. after the last one that yeah. sucked ass it's just yeah, like seriously. is the prequel just gonna be like following like a native american tribe as they like discover like i don't understand what the it's idea the, was for that it's the the guy from the book they described that put his fucking uh like prize pet bull <laughs> up there no mm, that's right that's right no, no need no one was curious about that man the story the story of him in the book is good enough yeah. Just like, read the book. The book's fucking good. We don't yeah, we don't need yes. a thousand movies. Yeah, Only the first agree. two that are perfect. Agree. Uh look, if you're gonna redo anything, Dreamcatcher. Make a new Dreamcatcher. Yes. <laughs> like at least like I, I say it I feel like I say it every time we talk about like the reboots and it's like endless sequels and shit, but I'm like, if you're going to like remake these movies, remake the ones that need to be remade because they were shitty from the beginning <laughs> like pet Who, cemetery whoever remakes Ouch. whoever remakes dreamcatcher needs to be on just as much fucking oxy as stephen king was when he wrote it <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's only fair I'm trying to think who would be good for that like brandon cronenberg's dreamcatcher sure <laughs> <laughs> fucking weird i'm in <laughs> I mean, I'll watch Brandon Grodenberg do anything, but his Dreamcatcher would be so fucking strange. <laughs> um, Paul W.S. Anderson's Dreamcatcher. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Just, I mean, a fucking regular Dreamcatcher already looks like a Paul W.S. Anderson movie anyway, so. That's true. Uh, I'm a shout out. Vinegar Syndrome. Got a bunch of fucking bangers for their uh, halfway to Black Friday sale, and I mean, will show up in the mail as soon as possible. Same. I need that fucking Villages of the Damned Three Horrors from Spain box set immediately. And I'm glad I just they're fucking killing it with the Cynthia Rothstock movies. Keep it coming. I need all of it. Uh, I also got that fucking extremely sick Hell Comes to Frogtown slipcase. Oh, yeah. If I didn't already own it, I would have bought that. Yeah, I, just, I have one that's like not the slipcase, so I was like, fuck it, I'll get the slipcase. Um, alright. Did anybody pick a movie for next week? Uh, I've got one if no one else does. Hey, go for it. Uh, I gotta, I gotta look up what the name of it was again. Cause I, I saw it last week and was like, okay, let me, let me add that to my Tubi list. <laughs> Looks no, like I, real fucking dog shit. I saw one that was called Shark Shock and I was like, hell yeah. But it turns out it's just Trailer Park Shark. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> I was like, damn it. Did we uh, do that on here? I don't think I don't so. Know. Yeah, I don't think we did. Uh, I'm not interested so... in Tara Reed again right now. That movie is actually surprisingly <laughs> not horrendous. Anyway, what's your movie, Kit? All right. So you know it's going to be good because it's only an hour long. <laughs> it is. 2012's Jaws of the Shark. The fuck? Two scientists genetically engineer a shark with legs, which escapes their captivity and goes <laughs> on a murdering spree wielding a chainsaw. Perfect. Jaws of the Shark? Yep. It's on Tubi, of course. Oh, yeah. I was gonna. I, this is one of the ones I was gonna pick. It's like. <laughs> it's got this weird fucking puppet costume thing for the shark. Yeah. <laughs> This movie's gonna be dog shit. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be so bad. I don't Can't know. Wait. Swedish. Maybe maybe it's gonna be fucking it's gonna rock. Uh I'm I've got my fingers crossed. I'm really hoping. <laughs> oh my god. Uh Katie, you're gonna have to fucking really find a banger to follow this movie. <laughs> wow. Um Ooh, this might be SOV movie. I'm oh, in. It certainly looks like it. <laughs> well, it's like like it's also like I feel like 2012, which means it's probably still just not gonna be great. Um. All right. Yeah. 
that that fucking movie next week. Get ready for uh, some Katie. You got to you're gonna have to pick Puppet Sharks or whatever this fucking movie was called. Hold on, there's Puppet Sharks. There was one at the end of this like that's like recent that I'd like was like, yeah Puppet Shark. <laughs> An all-puppet oh cast, when two boys venture into the no. nearby woods on a lakeside camping trip, they soon realize they have entered the territory of a rare lake shark with possibly supernatural properties. I don't really like puppets. Oh, no, I think this is a Polonia Brothers movie. From the, of course it is. It says, from the loonies behind Jurassic Shark, Raiders of the Lost Shark, and Ouija Shark. Mmm. Pass. Uh, it's got one five star review. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so mad. Fucking Doll Shark is a Mark Polonia movie because this poster art. Is yeah. Incredible. <laughs> um. All right. If you would like to support us, you can join our Patreon. Patreon.com/slash I suffer podcast. Glisten to Katie and I talk about the 2015 Fantastic Four movie with the nude thing in it. <laughs> uh, a regular bonus episode sometime in the next couple weeks probably we'll see uh, you can buy merch at our store for your shop you can leave us a rating on Spotify and a rating and review on iTunes tell us oh. tell us which Atomic Shark movie you watched <laughs> <laughs> and if you can figure out what the fuck's going on with the fucking cast credits on every fucking website for this movie <laughs> um you can follow us on instagram at i hope you suffer podcast follow Kate at hidden kids to reinkentrification of blood follow katie at werewolf face you can join katie's patreon at patreon.com slash werewolf face you can listen to my other podcast, Nate and Kate Movie Club. I think right before this episode comes out. Uh, yeah, I think right before. Something like that. A couple days before. We record an episode on Death Drop Gorgeous. So you can listen to that. Wait. Uh, Alright. Jaws of the Shark next week. Faith, it's going to be a fucking banger. Five stars. At least we'll <laughs> certainly find out. I assume Katie's gonna come next week and be like, "I quit." <laughs> my last episode. <laughs> uh, I've had it. I've uh, trying to. I've had a couple movies. I've tried. I've been looking at, but I'm like, I can't pick this because Katie will quit the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> like Tim and Eric's billion dollar movie. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> you made it through. Freddy got fingered. I think you could. Uh, uh, be fine. did I though? I think I'm in, I think I am in purgatory now. <laughs> no, you, you did the crow movies. You had a good time. <laughs> you liked salvation for some reason. I loved it. I keep, I, I'll keep it in my heart always. All right. I hope you crow shots, but why? Ooh, what if they did do that? That's what I'm saying. Make the fuck. The crow. Every, every movie should just be like ported over to like sharks. Universal soldiers, Would it but be, sharks. Yeah, the croc, the croak, or the shro. I'm in. I think the shro works. I think Kim died. He left. See ya. <laughs> uh, oh, he did. Yeah, he, he did. did. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, "Fuck these people and their band." Fuck the stupid done. crow. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs>